Good morning, YouTube. Um, I did a, a couple of videos over the weekend. Um, I hope it's clear. My name is Ella Scott. You know me as Ella Scott. My name is Reed Edwards, R-E-E. -E. Um, Edwards, I was born and raised in um, Brooklyn, New York, Williamsburg Housing. And thus, that's the reason I'm doing this quick video introduction. I was pretty nervous, and I still am, because I'm not used to doing videos like this. And I'm not hiding myself, okay? There's pictures. I got a picture of me in the other video introducing myself, so don't worry about it. I will show a picture of myself. Um, it's just the times of our social distancing and, um, and keeping your face covered and keeping yourself protected. I'm disabled, but I'm a biologist in the medical field, disabled. I'm a sketch artist as well as um, a published writer, some recognition, no money. And also, um, I'm Cherokee, a little bit of a Blackfoot. I'm Irish and West Indian Black. My father's from West Indian Islands. My mother is mostly Cherokee, Blackfoot, Irish, and African American. And there's a picture of her. And that's just when all this mess started. Today, I was talking about um, I couldn't get anybody for two months in a pandemic to be a witness to repairs that should have been done five years ago. I'm not going to show you pictures of the conditions in here. It's going to come later when the Calvary It's supposed to be just a clipboard inspection, but it may be more than two or three people. I'm going to be out in the narrow hallway, um, which um, the governor is very picky and he should be about clusters. So I'm going to um, show you the hallway, the filthy hallway, and the um, just the conditions, period. And uh, I, I did this um, video, because I don't like talking with this neither, because it's um, hard for me to breathe and hard for me to, hard for me to breathe and talk. I can breathe, but I, I'm not supposed to be talking. But I, I'm doing this because I don't look that well. I'm not... I'm not um, pretty or anything, but you'll see my pictures. But anyway, um, the bottom line is that I need help. And it's hard for me to get a lawyer. It's hard for me to, um, to, to get anything done. You know, um, it's just difficult for me um, because of the fact about the banging of the door, the threat opened the damn door before an inspection that was agreed on two months ago today. I'm going to be by myself, and, um, and these, uh, these conditions have been, it's a little worse, but it's been this way for five years, and the main theme of the uh, video is principle and when did the rules change. Anytime, if you're a legal resident in NYCHA housing, it became NYCHA housing in the late 70s. This place was built in 1934. Immigrant families, different people lived here and everything, and but in the between the late 70s and the early 90s, it became a HPD. It became um, a project, which wasn't what Mayor LaGuardia envisioned, a project. It was a housing development for low-income families, immigrants mostly. And then there was the Hispanic, Black, African-Americans, Asian. Anybody can live here, decent people. And, um, and it was really good for people after World War II to get housing in here and Vietnam War. But the principle of the thing is that the landlord was very aware of these repairs, tried to kick me out the day before my mother's funeral. And this was August 12, 2015. I'm on the Internet. I was with the local news station. And the only reason I could stay and fight for two and a half years to stay in my mother's apartment, she was very sick. I detail everything. She was very sick and, uh, and she died from two apartments she was placed in. But to get back to um, about the rules, if anything is wrong with the apartment, you're supposed to go into one of the two empty apartments that are available within this Williamsburg complex. It's 20 plus empty apartments now. I don't know why they're holding it up. There's families, soldier families that are waiting to get in here. They've been waiting as much as five years. And then people that had renovations it, it, they, they are not allowed to come in, so I, I'm just, it's just a mystery to me why these things are happening. But I am a legal resident. I was born and raised here. I have more rights than anybody. Why? Because I was born and raised here.
plus I am um, I'm disabled and I can't be in here and they know this for five years. That's why I keep emphasizing that five years and legal resident have a right to go to one of the empty apartments while they do repairs. That's why it's the principle, but maybe the rules have changed. I don't know. I would like to know when and why I can't have an empty apartment. And I'm being told by people that couldn't come here today, the legal social workers, that it, it, it's not going to be that easy. And I don't want to be shipped out of here. There's a lot of people that has helped, helped me because they love my mother. My Irish godmother is here. I had an Italian-American godmother who was a real estate attorney. She died. And I'm Roman Catholic. And anyway, the principle of the thing is, why can't I have one of those apartments when they do repairs? Why um, the haste and doing inspections during the middle of a pandemic? They've been well aware of these repairs for five years, but I haven't stopped them. It's just a matter of where am I going to live when these repairs are made? What, what kind of accommodations are made for me? You know, what kind of accommodations are made for me? Um, I heard some, that's why I'm turning. I heard somebody coming downstairs. It's just a mess. And I'm trying to get this video out. So when I send the other videos, it may be a little confusing, but I'm explaining about what is going on why I'm doing it. I need a witness and you're my witness and I need help. And I'm going to be videotaping them doing a so-called inspection. They may do work. And even if somebody was here, they can't stop them from doing work and exposing me. And from these conditions, even though I'm already disabled, I develop asthma, which is not in my family and carpal tunnel syndrome. And, uh, and it's no causality relationship. It is that because I didn't have this before. I had the other disability, my eyes, my ears from my accident, my, um, I have vertigo, that's dizziness, my spine, and then on top of that, the emotional stress of being harassed and then not getting, being of that culture, spiritual and American, part American Indian, I didn't have time to mourn my mother's death because right after they tried to kick me out the day before a funeral, they say, give up the keys three days after that. Well, I didn't because of the reporter being there saying, you're not going to kick her out during this grieving time. I didn't have time to grieve. And this was five years ago. And it's all about repairs. And it wasn't. Want me out for market rent. Even harassed my mother before she died about going to Chelsea Editions, going to Bedford-Stuyvesant, even a custodial worker that came up here to fix something in the bathroom said, we got an apartment for you at Bedford-Stuyvesant. She said, we who? You're a custodial worker. So she had to be harassed. They never really want residents that's already here, the powers that be. They wanted people out. And I told, and I will tell you all about it in the other videos about the roofing and the people had to move back in the 90s. And it's all of that. All of this caused my mother's sickness and died. Even with the emergency surgery, I, I had her only for five years and then she died. And then my hell began and I'm still in hell. And like I said, they're going to come here and do an inspection today. And I don't know, I can't stop them from doing work. But I'm going to plead to their common sense about which rooms that that's feasible to do that I wouldn't be put in an unnecessary risk or danger. Um, I don't know what to do. And there's nobody here to witness except for you. And I'm hoping you two will pick this up. And I'm doing it quick because I got to go and get finished before they come here today. I did a video on January 2nd and 3rd. I'm doing the 4th today because I want to introduce what's going on. But it will be videotaped, it, and, and if it's just a clipboard inspection, I'm going to say something about that too. But if it's not, and it's too many clusters of people, then that's putting me at risk, hoping I get sick, and then over with. But then there's a whole lot of tape and evidence, and I don't think they want public to know that five years I lived under these filthy conditions, and I didn't stop them from doing the... The um, repairs. I'm out of breath because I had to go downstairs already before five o'clock from these repairs. But it, the question is, where are you going to put me? 
I should be in the apartment. I'd like to know when the rules change that you, don't, as a legal resident, you can't go in an empty apartment while they do repairs, that you have to stay there and succumb to whatever subpar, cheap, excuse my expert, is shit that they're going to slap together to fix the apartment and maybe make matters worse. Environmental people say they use subpar stuff. These are private that my mother paid for. They say if they don't do a half-assed job cleaning up the place, you could live there. It would be okay. These are private environmental people. I got evidence on that. And it was introduced to the judge when I was trying to fight for my, to stay in my mother's apartment. Anyway, I got to go. It's January 4th. It's five, after 530. In a few hours, the show will begin. Either I'll stay here tonight or I'll be out of here. I don't know. But it's going to be televised live. And you'll see for yourself what's going on. Um, I hope things work out, but it's been five years, and it's their fault that this thing hadn't been resolved. Now we're in the middle of still of a pandemic, economical uh, situation that is not great. I'm disabled. I develop additional worries, putting me at risk. Hopefully things will turn out okay. I'll talk to you later. Thank you, YouTube.